So good morning everyone. Today I'm going to publish the first video that I offered you a couple of days ago and this is all about skin detection. So without, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is the image I have selected. This is an image from the photo shoot that I had a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, the skin of the model is quite quite excellent I would say there are some small blemishes that I want to get rid of some little imperfections in the makeup or even some eyelashes that got in the way of the eyes so the first thing we're gonna learn today is how to do spot healing and maybe some cloning too then we'll jump into Dutch and burn and finally we we'll end up this first video with these frequencies separation Okay, so as a first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my background image. I'm going to copy that layer. I'm going to go to the spot healing or the healing, healing brush tool. And what I'm going to do is start selecting the areas where I want to, to focus. Let's say I want to get rid of these branches. What I do is I select the part of the skin that is more similar and I'll start doing these corrections here for instance here you have to be very careful with this process because it's a little bit destructive so just make sure you're not overdoing it because it's going to show up as a too aggressive measure at the end of the product so I'm starting to look for some imperfections in the skin, some little blemishes here and there. This is a this is a process that takes some time, so you have to be really patient. Let's see for instance these imperfections on the in the makeup. So let's get really close to the makeup, slowly change. And very quickly you start seeing changes right but again select the point very near the part that you want to improve otherwise it's going to look not very subtle as this one here I'm just gonna go back a little bit okay so let me find a, a more definite spot probably near here I want to fix there you go so it all depends on how much you want to really make these corrections. It all depends on your taste. Let's zoom out. Let's move the image around. Let's try to fix, for instance, this little spots here. By the way, I'm using a mouse. I didn't bring my tablet with me this time around, but it's probably much easier when you, when you use your, your tablet. Okay, so this is the before, and this is the after. And by the way, I would change the name of this layer, and we we'll call it clone, so that you're clear of which layer you're working in. Again, I find this one a little bit distracting. So again, at the point, disappear it for this one too and again the idea is not to get too carried away with the different uh, changes you want to make I'm going to fix these eyelids because I find it a little bit distracting so let me get a decent point here here I have to be very careful of not overdoing this process Back up a little bit. You see, gotta be very, very careful. Just slowly make those changes. There are many other ways of doing it. I prefer doing it this way, but doing small changes. As you can see, on in on out probably we, we probably need to do some fixing the eye later on okay correction, correction there 
So this is one of the this is one of the problems or one of the challenges you're going to face when you do spot healing. The image may become too soft. So in order to prevent that, you have to be very careful in terms of what what is the area you select as spot healing, right? So the last thing you want to do is lose texture. There are some times, there are some things that you cannot avoid, but if you can, try to avoid losing texture as much as you can. So I think, yeah, that's probably about it. Okay, let's try to fix some of the eyelashes here. Let's try to fix some of the makeup here too. And again, Fix this, fix that, this one, this one, this one. But you get the idea, right? So let me, let me make this one a little bit smaller. I kind of think that this is a little bit distracting, so I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. Just fixing this. Fixing this as well. Okay. okay, so this is the four. The See, small changes, slow changes. Can probably do something similar here. This is much better. And again, you can you can take a lot of time trying to fix this. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to get rid of this this natural mark. You may want to do it. You may not want to do it. It all depends on your taste. I'm just going to do it so I can show you how you can edit photo. So let me let me show you quickly where we are in terms of touch cloning and spot healing. See, I've been working on some of the of the most relevant parts. So this is this is looking better already. You see, this is the after. This is the before. This is the you, can, you can see those. I'm trying to get rid of those imperfections again. The makeup, natural imperfections, or blemishes, or high spots. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work on the image. I'm gonna fast forward and then we'll jump immediately into the second technique, okay? Just hit me up. 
Okay, so I think we've done a pretty good job, but again, as I said before, the skin of the model is pretty good, so I didn't have to do a lot, a lot of work. A lot, a lot of work. We still probably need to get rid of this one and do one more final, final change. Let's see if that looks natural. Yes, okay, there you go. Good, so this is the layer for clone spot healing. I can do more, but it's, it's up to you really. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two curve adjustment layers, and this is for dodging and burning. So I go down here, the curves, and now I duplicate this one, uh, Command, Command J, if you are using Mac. I'm going to call the first one Dodge, and I'm going to call the second one Burn. Okay, so for the first one, Dodge, what I'm going to do and see what this does to skin. I'm going to pick the middle point and I'm going to raise so that when I use this, I'm going to paint and clarify. See, I mean that's that's not a finite image, just in case. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to deactivate this mask with Command I, so it goes back to normal. And with the second one, I'm going to do just the opposite. Bring down the middle point, let's say more or less halfway here, so it becomes really dark and I'm going to be okay so now I have these two tools so dodge and burn I'm going to combine them both shift both layers command G this is what I'm going to do we'll call dodge and burn dodge and burn okay so um, I've learned through the internet different uh, different uh, trainers like Pix and Perfect which I really learned a lot from that you may also use a couple of tools to be able to see better the image and how this changes as you start to jump In order to do that, to do that, I create another curve adjustment layer. But I'm going to pull it away from the middle there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down and make it really contrasty. So. I'm going to alter the image and make it really contrasting so I can really see where are the dark spots and where are the bright spots. I mean, just, just to, to make it really uh, contrasting. Okay, that's one. And the second thing I'm going to introduce is a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to go all the way to gray. Just make sure you have a zero saturation. And then on the blending mode, choose color. Okay, there you are. So I will group these two together. Command G. And so this is um, eight. Basically, it's going to help me see better what parts of the image I want to dodge. So once I have that, let's say I. Deactivate it, I activate it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to start dodging those areas where it need to be dodged. See these black spots here, here, down, down the nose, on the chin, just to make it more uniform and look better. So, this is what we do. I select the mask from dodge, I select the brush tool, I go back to a flow of more or less two, and I'm going to start painting with the white. Remember, you have to use white. So let's say, let's see, start painting here. I'm using two. You can use one if you do not feel comfortable with. This is the process that's going to take some time. Okay. Make sure you start painting 
whatever you see darker spots within the image like here here underneath the nose these are really important areas where you need to focus your attention okay. here on the eyelids eyelids eyebrows eyelids well thing under the eyes right I'm not a English is not my first language, so excuse if I make some mistakes. Okay, so let me see the after, before, and after. You immediately see how the image starts to get a little bit uh, less shadowy, less dark, and you start bringing up all those unnecessary, so unnecessary shadows. Remember what I'm saying? Don't get rid of the shadows that give three-dimensionality to the image because otherwise it's going to be too flat. So just make sure you highlight or you dodge the areas that are important for the skin to look more, more clean, to look more steady. So here, I can here. This is a process that takes some time. You have to be very patient. Right here. So. If you find areas which are too bright, then you can apply the burn process. Maybe here I will apply a little bit of burn. Although it depends on what is the um, what's the face, what the face looks like, kind of thing, because you also may be painting areas that you're not supposed to be painting because it decreases the volume or the three-dimensionality of the picture. Let's go back before and after. You see there are minor subtle changes, but these subtle changes are going to have an impact on the image, especially on how the skin looks at the end of the, of the process. See this is a very Patchy areas here. Skin. Very, very patchy. Okay, so now I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to do some work and I'm going to do a bit of a fast forward. So in this case, let's try not to get too carried away. You see the before and after. It's, it's kind of working, but you have to be careful. Just not to make it look too too unrealistic. Okay? So if you do make a mistake like that, just go back to the area and repaint it with the uh, with black. Just go back. Make sure you're not going over too, too abruptly or you can do the burn burn and make sure you are using a low flow normally I would suggest to use 2% or maximum 3% just to make sure that you don't overdo it and it doesn't look fake so Okay, 
some closure. You said you want to Okay, once again, depends on your taste, how much time you want to spend editing in the process. I know I'm not And also seeing where you want to edit those those blemishes. The the biggest blemishes really that you're finding across your photo. Don't overdo it. So before this idea, before, after, and let's see how it looks without the black and white. This is before, this is the after. The skin looks a little bit healthier. See, and this is how it's looking so far. Maybe I have some spots here, maybe there. Just going to fast track for one last time. In this case, I'm going to increase a little bit the flow with a smaller brush just to make sure I can cover this very dark area here in the nose. But again, don't overdo it, otherwise, you'll lose the three dimensionality of the image. But you can always go back to cloning, and if you want to fix this little spots right here, it's up to you. Again, the idea is not to overdo it. Okay, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty happy with the image. I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just wanted to show you what the different techniques are all about. This is the after. Before, see how the shadows have been improved off the image. So making sure that the skin looks a little bit more fresh. I didn't find any too high spot, that's why I haven't used burn that much. In some cases when you have blown up highlights, that's when it's very useful. You can probably still work a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, but it's really, it's really up to you. Okay. Final round, and we can set to go to the next, to the next technique. Said you wanna move forward. I know we're not done. I'm thinking about our moment. Okay, I think we're all good to go. I know I'm not CD Can I before and after. I can probably work a little more, but we'll do it at that point. Okay, what's my next step? My next step is going to be frequency separation. In order to do so, I don't. I no longer need this two two layers that I created on purpose. So I'm just gonna drag this whole group and erase it. So in my process, what I normally do is I I copy an image and I create an image on top of all the images I've been working in, just to make sure that that image contains all the changes I've done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push or press. Command Alt Shift E, and that's going to create layer number one. So this is this layer. I will call it middle product. Okay. So we're halfway between the process. This image contains already all the cloning we've done and all the Dutch and burning. So I'm going to once I have this middle product. Let's put it that way. I'm going to make two copies. I'm going to call the first layer low and the second layer high. This is going to be my frequency separation. I select the low, I go on filter, go for blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to select three. Okay, where's three? Step I'm going to do, I'm going to select the high layer 
Can go to I image, apply image, select low, invert, select add, and remember to use a scale of 2. Okay, so you can barely see the image. Now on the blending mode, use linear light. And that's it. You have the original image. What I normally do here is create a mask layer and I duplicate two times this image. I'm going to deactivate the other layers and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so now we have two copies of the, let's say, high frequency, this is low frequency, and this, as you can see, basically increase the sharpness. Let me activate the copy again, and let me activate the second copy. So I don't want this level of detail yet, so I'm going to deactivate both and just leave the first one. So at this point in time, I have exactly the same image and I've basically done a separation of the frequencies. In the low, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do another fixing of, of the skin and with the high, I'm going to highlight some of the areas that I want my image to be seen or, or you know, catch the attention of the hero. Okay, let's start with the low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let select different parts of the skin and then I'm going to make that skin a little bit softer but keeping the texture because I still have this, this other frequency. So I'm going to go to my lasso tool or just press L and I'm going to select different parts of the image. Honestly, I'm going I to uh, click shift so that I add Caught more and more parts feelings. of this. So let's say I fix something in your this part of the front line. I fix this part of the nose too. Remember, I'm going to is a little bit softer. Is closed and I'm going to I'm in the deep end. The waves are washing over the eyes and the shit. No, I'm not cheeks. sober. Can I come closer? I want to come over when you leave me like that. Seria, here to be like that. Ooh, when I think about that, I'll be coming right back. Over. And of course, you said you want to move forward. I know we're not done. I'm thinking about so, even though my model had a really, really good skin, I know I'm not so Can I come close? So, once I have selected this, um, this part of the image, I go to select, modify, right there. Uh, 11 pixels is about fine, so basically what this does is selects different parts of the images and makes the transition very soft, so you don't have a, a hard transition between your selection and the rest of the image. So, select 11, and then I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and this is where you have to be very careful. So, This is something that you have to be very careful about. I did all of this in the high, in the high um, frequency. I should have done it in the low frequency. So, again, so the last tool, I select a different, different parts of the image. Now I go to filter. Okay, let's go to Gaussian blur. There you go. Now you have the right, the right um, layer. Be careful with that. It's a mistake. That you may make and you will have undesirable results. So just look at the skin here. Honestly, I let me start increasing. Let's let's go to the last one. That's what you don't want to want to create. Mask. 
uh, gray area. So we'll look for something in between, something that makes the skin soft, but doesn't make it look artificial or a mannequin kind of. Swimming pool is closed and I'm in the deep end. The waves are washing over. Yeah, I can live with that. Can I come closer? I don't wanna come over. Okay, let's go for something. Good. Deselect Command D. There you go. So you basically soften the skin. You still have a lot of texture in here because you have the you have your high pass. But this is what looked before. This is what it looks like. You can still recover part of the skin if you activate the other you said the you other move forward. Um, layer masks that you have over here I'm and that's what we're going to do right away so let's say I, I want I'm not to sober. recover a Can little bit of the texture of the brush so I can do me like reveal that. and then I start thinking how you recover that part and makes like it a little bit sharper so you don't really lose all of the texture but rather you can use some selective corrections or some selective corrections This process looks more real. See? There you go. So you've done some specific adjustments throughout the image. Honestly, I shouldn't. Okay, so that's looking that's looking right. Okay. Let's do something addition. In addition to that, we're gonna work now on the eyes and the sharpness. I'm going to jump a little bit on the the next video, but let me show you how to increase the sharpness of the Remember, I created another layer right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my brush and make it smaller. Let's see what I'm going to do now. Let's put the flow of the hand. Just start shrinking. So that the tension is driven to the eyes. And this is something you see all the time. Like some eyes which are really sharp, they draw all the attention. And that's what you do. Sharpen the eyes, look. Before, after. Just basically technique to sharpen the eyes. So I'm not going to work too much on the eyes because I have another video which will be focused more on the eyes and the lips just to make them pop I know I'm not so maybe some of the can I come closer some I wanna the come over as well when you leave me like that girl don't do me like that Ooh, when I think about six, that six, right I'll be coming right back let me get all of these in the group girl don't do me six, like six, that no two in the group command G So this is so far what we have been doing with the image. We applied the cloning tool at the beginning. We went to Dodge and Burning and finally we did a little bit of frequency separation. And let me show you first. So this is where we started. Right? This is when we applied the cloning tool. This is when we started doing the Dodge and Burning, basically 
highlighting those other areas. This was the image we obtained. Then we did the low frequency. We apply the high image and then we did a little bit of sharpness. So thank you much, thank you so much for tuning in. This is uh, the end of year number one, where I have shown you some of the techniques I use, and for the sake of the time, I have gone to a point where the next stage is for video number two and video number three, but I will focus on adding a little bit color, a little bit color to the image, and adding that little pop that you want your image to look like. Thank you very much, Swimming Raul. Stay safe and keep help. I'm Bye -bye. in the deep end. The waves are washing over. I know I'm not so.